With plans to extend light rail to Milwaukee, some in the community are concerned that TriMet is overextending its financial obligations, causing a strain on local budgets. There's another one here. Time to finalize the Selwood Bridge budget. Well, we know that's not fun. It's not going to happen for a good long time. That's a problem, though. It's, it needs money. Capital project, desperately needed. On the front page, we got Oregon to slice budgets, 9%. Now, it's not like we're at the bottom of a trough and all things are going to turn rosy. We are really in a difficult position with rising demands for service caused by the arrival of the Green Line and declining revenues uh, brought on by the economy and urban renewal districts. I would ask that you um, really look at ways that we can uh, lessen the, the need for reliance on uh, tax increment financing to fund those when the, the tax base is frozen at a certain level and all that increment is diverted to pay for these projects, we are, in, we are expected to operate and provide increasing service to the areas with no additional funding. Uh, many in the community are concerned that tri uh, TriMet is emphasizing new capital construction over existing operations and is overextending itself. Is the expansion of rail a higher priority than sustaining current bus service? No. Um, a matter of fact, FTA would not let us um, get into the capital construction build business if we were not um, properly taking care of the base system that we're working on. Obviously, there's some reaction to the budget situation that we and many other public agencies, certainly every major public transit district I know of, has faced over the last year. Um, and there's no question that we've had to make some difficult choices that all of us would rather we had. <clears throat> but I would say that you know, fundamentally the system is sound. We need to do some work. We need to get some of those routes restored as the economy comes back. But fundamentally, we've got a very strong system, and I think we'll continue to have a very strong system. TriMet is operating WES, the region's first modern commuter rail line. Ridership has been below expectations, and the capital cost per new rider is high. We asked, how much is this problem related to the current economy, and to what extent, if any, has planning missed the mark? Well, that's an excellent question, and one of the, um, if you will, pieces of this New Starts planning process that we go through with the federal government is a before and after study, and we'll learn a lot more as we complete that in the next year. Um, I would say a couple things about Wes. One is um, that it was a new mode, so a bit of an experiment. I'd also say, number two, is that ridership is growing, and we've got double digit increases. So we've got some improvement. Third, actually, when Metro has done their travel forecasts, they show that to be one of the strongest transit ridership corridors in the region. I think part of the problem that was very hard for us to analyze in retrospect is the difference between peak hour service, which MetWest West is now providing, even though they're fairly broad peak hour definitions, um, versus the all-day service that TriMet is used to providing. And I think what we, I think what we found is that there perhaps has been uh, not as much response because the flexibility of West is not as strong when it's not an all-day service. But I think the corridor is very strong. And if you look at how that corridor connects with the historic downtowns on the, uh, in the Southwest Corridor, it's still you know, very a logical, logical connection. There's a Washington Square stop. Uh, Unfortunately, it's not as convenient to Washington Square as we'd like, but maybe that's something that could be worked on over time. Downtown Beaverton and the connection to the uh, Beaverton Transit Center, the buses and the, and the MAX, Red Line, Blue Line, right there, it's just superb. Um, it stopped right in downtown Tiger. It stopped right in downtown Tualatin, where there's major renewal efforts, in a, in a, and it serves a lot of businesses in, in Wilsonville. So I think there's a lot of potential there, um, and we're going to have to keep working, I think, to realize that. As a follow-up, do you feel that other services in the area, uh, other TriMet provided services, could be better coordinated with West to increase ridership? And as a second part, uh, would TriMet consider shutting down West in the future if ridership does not improve? Well, I think we're continuing to see the growth in ridership, so my hope is that I don't have to face that decision anytime soon. Um, but in terms of the coordination of the service, I'm sure that there's things that we can do better. I think right now, for example, Wilsonville Smart does a uh, great job at the south end of the line. There's also connections to the Chariots line that runs to Salem, <clears throat> and that's been very popular. Um, so I think one of the things we'll continue to do is just uh, continue to watch the ridership, listen to our riders, 
ask them questions about, you know, how can the service improve. We'll be talking to employers, trying to get their employees on the system. Um, and we'll continue to work with the transportation management organizations along the corridor to see if we can get better results. That's our plan. A uh, bus-related question would be, for some time now, TriMet has been branding bus service lines as frequent service. Uh, with recent budget cuts, the definition of frequent service has been watered down. What are your plans for improving these standards, and should financial constraints continue to worsen? Should some lines maybe be dropped from being frequent service? Well, that's a good question. I, I don't know if we should um, <clears throat> drop them, but um, it, we made some minor adjustments during, um, um, and, and some major adjustments, I would say, particularly during non-peak hours and evening shoulders. Um, and I, my suspicion is that um, that that will, people will feel the effects of that, and that's the kind of service I'd love to see prioritized in terms of its return. <clears throat> we know, and I know as a writer, that the best service is frequent, regular bus service um, that you can count on, that you can go out the door, you don't have to look at your watch, you don't have to look at even your fancy tracker tracker, transit tracker on the iPhone, but you know it's going to be there, and you know it's going to be coming. <clears throat> that's the best service that we can um, uh, offer so our objective is to get back to that and we're going to have to make some compromises to get through this uh, great recession but uh, we know what good service is and we hope to continue to provide it.